Hello everyone, this is Sister Gwendolyn Song. I hope everybody is having a good start to their weekend. And I pray that everyone is drawing closer and closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm on here today to share some more things that the Lord has been sharing with me. He asked me to put out this video message today and ask you to take it to prayer. I'm going to begin this video message by reading, a, it's a little lengthy passage, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. I'm going to read that first. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Let us worship the Lord through the reading of his word. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of air. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and identify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Amen, amen. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, and he has come in the flesh. So we need to make sure that we take that passage and really, really uh, go over it many times. And how do you know if someone is of God? By that confession and by the fruit of their lives. Are they loving each other? And so I want to ask you today, friends, uh, if anybody is out there and you have a grudge against a family member, a co-worker, a neighbor, I want to implore you to repent and just ask the Holy Spirit to guide you back to a path of love and reconciliation. I don't want anybody who comes to this channel or anybody uh, in the body of Christ uh, to have the Lord come back and find them having any issues of resentment or hostility to those the Lord has placed in your lives. So let's make that a priority today. I have three topics to cover today, and this might be a little bit longer message than normal. And the first one is called the backpack prophecy. And this is a prophecy that the Lord gave me several months back. And I don't know if I've actually released it before. I might have put it on Facebook, but I really can't recall. But terrorism is going to grow in the USA, friends, in various forms. And the measures instituted in the name of safety, uh, they're really just more measures to take away our rights. I had a prophetic dream several months back, and I was wearing a backpack. And when I was in a public place, 
uh, people began to get really nervous and they began pointing at me and pointing me out to these armed security guards or uh, like police officers. And of course, I didn't want anybody to be concerned uh, about my backpack or what the contents of it were. So I quickly walked over to the men and I allowed them to search my bag. Now, can you believe that? That is coming for the future. You know, search, uh, searching our persons, our purses, our backpacks, and uh, people will be on high alert. And I was just thinking about this prophecy that the Lord gave me, and uh, we have worked a lot with the homeless in our area, and you know homelessness is going to rise in the days to come, unfortunately. And, you know, homeless people, all they have are their backpacks. That's what they carry all their essential supplies in. And just can you imagine this uh, new wave of, of panic or hysteria? And they won't, people will not be able to carry their backpacks. Where are they going to put those at while they're walking about taking care of their daily activities? And I'm telling you, the enemy really wants to destroy everything that is normal in our lives and have people operating more in fear. And, you know, fear is one of the quickest ways to get people to go along with your agenda, especially if the agenda has to do with taking away our rights. And I know, uh, you know, they're coming for the guns, too, friends. I want to show you this second image. Uh, look at that building. That is the school I went to when I, I was in elementary school. I went there from kindergarten to second, to what? Kindergarten to sixth grade. And they tore down this building about two years ago or so, maybe longer. And I remember many of those who attended uh, this school, it's called Merlin Heights. They wanted to get a brick, like a memorial brick. So they went by and they, they picked up a brick and took it home as a as a little keepsake, but I want to tell you back in November, uh, back in November of last year, the Lord, he had sent me in a dream into an elementary school to get my family members out because the Antichrist was uh, secretly ordering terrorist attacks on the elementary schools. Now, why did he do this? He didn't want anyone to know about his involvement. And yet it was clearly him who ordered these attacks. And there were jihadist friends. They actually were in the buildings. And the Lord allowed me to go into the building in the dream and to rescue my own family first. So after the first scene in the dream, I, then I saw this large parade. And the jihadists were in, intermingled with those in the parade. And I knew who the jihadists were and... For some reason, they could not hide from me. So I won't say too much about the second half of the dream. But clearly, the Lord is wanting to send out a strong message to the church that when you see the son of perdition on the scene, and believe me, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're going to know who the son of perdition is. Uh, when you see him come on the scene, and if you have small children in school, you're going to need to pull those children from school because they will be potential targets of terrorism under the Antichrist rule. So I really want you friends to pray over this one. The final topic I want to cover is concerning animals in the last days. If you have pets or if you're a farmer, I want you to pray over your animals, your pets, your livestock regularly. Because the enemy is looking for more host organisms. They are in need of more living bodies. So if you're someone who just loves animals, you love to pet every stray dog or cat you, you meet, you may want to stop doing that. Because as spiritual darkness descends on the earth and more and more rebellion occurs, demonic possession of animals is going to grow. And this is what the Lord spoke to my heart last week. I was literally uh, in the throne room in a dream speaking to him. And he was telling me to share with the people to exercise caution as the days grow darker. They need to be on the watch for animals with strange behavior. 
So these are some of the behaviors you really want to steer away from, especially like stray dogs that may be wandering around. You, you might have heard about those, the coyote that was in San Francisco. It was on a rampage for, I think, about eight months, and it had five victims that it had bitten, and they finally caught that thing. But one of those incidents where the coyote came up to a little kid in the parking lot of a park and bit the kid and the nanny took the, a bike helmet and smacked the coyote over the head and then he had let go of the child. So we really need to be careful, friends. Some of these behaviors would be things such as foaming at the mouth, increased chewing or biting. That is abnormal for the animal's uh age of development, animals that have increased urination or defecation, super strange behavior, increased strength. Okay, animals that you may see walking up a wall, animals that might talk. And it seems almost surreal to say these things, friends, but demonic possession can cause all kinds of wild manifestations. And you guys probably remember that little two-year-old boy who was killed at uh, Disney Disneyland, no, Disney World. It was at the Seven Seas Lagoon. There was an alligator that bit the child. And people think that the child was eaten by the alligator, but the alligator actually bit him and drowned him. And uh, again, I said coyote attacks are on the rise. Animals that will come out of their wild habitat into uh, a human's uh, uh, residences or in the residential areas. I also want to add that if you are out hunting and you find your target unusually easy to kill or its behavior is really strange, you don't want to eat that animal either. Uh, ask the Lord to guide you to a healthy animal. And if you're a farmer and you may notice some of your livestock disappearing. Friends, uh, this is not a comfortable topic, but there are fallen angels. And uh, these fallen angels, they are looking for sources of meat. They are carnivores. They eat human flesh. But to keep a low profile, they may resort to eating livestock when they're not wanting to blow their cover. So I don't want to say too much about this topic on this forum. But I, I want to just uh, say to you in closing, friends, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Are, are you new to prophecy messages? Remember to take these topics to the Lord in prayer. Write them down in a notebook. And when the Lord answers your questions, write down the date that he answered your question. And watch your faith grow. And you can do that with your prayer request too. Write down the date of your prayer request and then the date that the Lord answered your prayer. Watch your faith grow. The Lord, he is not missing any of your prayers. He, he doesn't miss a thing and he will speak to his children in various ways. He will always confirm his word because he is the word. He will usually speak through the Bible, but in other ways as well. So I just want to say a, a little short prayer in closing. Dear Lord Jesus, uh, please bless all of those who have come to this channel today. Lord, please give them discernment to be able to know what is from you and what is a lie. Help them, Lord, to be prepared for your coming. Give them and their children the strength and the grace to get by each and every day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, friends. Until next time. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Shalom.